Upon launching the program, you see Assistant where you can select pre-designed interiors to get started quickly or choose a recent project. We'll start by taking a look at the main window. To the left, we have the library panel with the supplied 3D objects. There are three tabs here, building elements, furniture, and the project tree. Now the project tree is a breakdown of all of the objects included in the given project. Here you can control an object's visibility as well as lock and unlock it. Just below is a 3D preview area that provides a look at any object selected in the library panel. You can resize or hide this entire panel using the handle to the bottom right. Next, we have the 2D view toolbar where you can find the selection tool, the straight wall tool for drawing walls, floor and ceiling tools for creating custom floors and ceilings, measurement and annotation tools for adding notes to a floor plan, camera tools for adding user cameras and creating videos, as well as zoom and pan tools. Just a bit to the right is a red forklift button that launches the Google 3D Warehouse browser in case the supplied 3D objects aren't enough for you. Here you can search for Google SketchUp objects and import them straight to your project. Now the I button shows and hides the inspector, but I'll get to that in just a second. The next three buttons change the mode you work in. There is the 2D view for creating floor plans, the 3D view for viewing and refining your interior, and the split mode which is a combination of both. The 3D toolbar includes a set of movement tools that allow you to walk through, look around, and fly through your project. But there is also the option of using the movement wheel that appears when the cursor is in the lower center of the 3D view. Live Interior 3D offers three rendering modes for the sake of convenience and flexibility. Shadows and Lights, Lights Only, and No Lights or Shadows, which is the fastest mode. The Camera button brings up the Export dialog for saving 3D views as images and panoramas. Now let's jump over to the Inspector. The first tab contains Object Properties, where you can control the characteristics of walls, furniture, columns, and other objects. Next, we have the Materials tab with the supplied library of materials that can be applied to objects. Here one can also create and edit materials. In the 2D Properties tab, you can alter the appearance of the floor plan and the objects there. The Cameras tab contains all of the cameras in the current project. Here one can add, delete, and switch between user cameras and movie tracks, as well as record movies. The Lights Properties tab contains tools for controlling light sources, including the sun and moon. You can also change the external environment in the Environment panel. The last tab, Building Properties, is where new stories and roofs can be added and deleted. That's it for the main window. Now let's take a quick look at the program preferences. The New Project tab is where you can select default measurement units and scale, as well as define default story height. Options in the 3D Settings tab control 3D picture quality and program performance. The Google 3D Warehouse tab offers options for imported objects. And finally, the Miscellaneous tab handles things such as autosave functionality and 3D preview animation. Note that the program manual offers a more detailed look at the program's interface. There you will also find shortcuts for many of the tools discussed in this tutorial, including movement tools in 3D and changing views. Well, that about wraps it up for the interface.